Welcome to Inside Chips, the podcast that keeps you up to speed on the fast-moving world of semiconductors. I'm your host, Gregory Haley, Technology Editor with Semiconductor Engineering, and every week we'll bring you the breakthroughs, the deals, and the science shaping the chip industry. Welcome. It's April 25th, and there are big moves happening in the semiconductor industry this week, and we've got them covered. First up, Intel. Word is they're planning another 20% workforce cut. That would make two major reductions in just eight months. It's also the first big move under new CEO Lip Bhutan, with more likely to come. Intel also released Q1 earnings showing revenue flat at $12.7 billion year over year. Now, contrast that with TSMC, which just dropped an unusually detailed roadmap at its North America Tech Symposium. They're going big on 3D ICs for high-performance computing and low-power chips for AR-VR. TSMC also introduced a radio frequency platform for smartphones, offering 30% area and power reduction to support future AI-driven wireless standards like Wi-Fi 8. And the company announced it is near qualification in automotive for its 3 nanometer automotive chip uh, for advanced driver assist systems and AV applications, while its 6 nanometer EUV and upcoming 4 nanometer EUV will be supporting ultra low power Internet of Things AI devices. TSMC also showcased its high performance computing packaging technology. TSMC detailed its roadmap for two implementations of system on wafer platforms. Additional advancements include Coop Silicon Photonics and HBM4 base dies, along with integrated voltage regulators optimized for AI. They also previewed the A14 node, targeting for 2028 release. Building on its upcoming 2 nanometer node, A14 promises up to 15% speed gains, or 30% power savings, and 20% boost in logic density. Of course, none of this happens in a vacuum. TSMC's ecosystem partners are lining up to support the new nodes. ANSYS is supplying multi-physics platforms for A16 and EM tools for 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer. Cadence is bringing tools for digital analog and thermal analysis for A16 and 2 nanometer P plus DDR5 IP. Siemens is supporting 2 nanometer P and A16 with SPICE and variation aware verification tools. And Synopsys has full design flows and IP for 2 nanometer and 2 nanometer P. In other news, McKinsey released a new report on semiconductor industry investments and challenges. The consultancy pointed to nearly a trillion dollars in infrastructure investments over the next five years, but noted the chip industry must overcome capital-related issues, increasing material demands, offshore concentrations of raw materials and packaging, logistical and handling issues, and talent shortages. At MIT, researchers built what they're calling a periodic table of machine learning. It links 20 plus classical machine learning algorithms and may help improve current models and invent new ones. And iMac is making green tech strides. They shared early results from their PFAS free EUV photoresists showing high resolution patterns. A cleaner, greener resist process without compromising EUV performance is the current holy grail for sustainable chip making at advanced nodes. Turning to global news, in Europe, the Center for European Policy Analysis urged the continent not to play subsidy games with the U.S. or China. Instead, they say, focus on design and compound semiconductors. In the U.K., Innovate awarded grants to Quantum Consortia. Projects include benchmarking quantum error correction and integrating test beds into commercial data centers. In Asia, AMD and KDDI are partnering on a 5G networks with fourth generation Epic CPUs. And over in Japan, Fujitsu and Riken revealed a 256 qubit superconducting quantum computer. That's a big milestone for hybrid computing systems. Now let's turn to this week's in-depth section where we're looking at how artificial intelligence is completely reshaping the way chips are designed, packaged, and manufactured. As AI systems grow more powerful, they're driving massive changes inside the data center, where multi-die architectures and chiplets are now being used to handle the sheer volume of data being processed and moved. But this shift isn't limited to hyperscale environments. It's filtering through the entire semiconductor design chain, from EDA tool flows to verification strategies, packaging choices, and even how engineering teams are structured. 
Traditional silos that once kept design, verification, and packaging workflows neatly separated are starting to collapse. AI isn't just helping with optimization, it's forcing a rethinking of the entire design process. And as complexity increases with the rise of 3D integration and chiplet-based systems, companies are now starting with the package and working backward, a complete reversal of the old model. You can read the full analysis of this story and much more at semiengineering.com. In mergers and acquisitions, ST Micro acquired DeepLight, a Canadian Edge AI firm, and Okika Devices bought Anadyme, known for programmable analog arrays. There is big news happening in automotive this week. The U.S. government announced a new automated vehicle framework as part of a new transportation innovation agenda. McKinsey and Company reported on how consumer priorities and expectations are shaping the EV transition in major markets. The Automotive Edge Computing Consortium released digital twin use cases for automobiles, which focuses on real-time data processing and edge computing to optimize mobility services. Infineon introduced a magnetic switch family to support the functional safety applications with requirements up to ASIL-B. The company also partnered with Morelli to advance automotive display technology with a MIMS laser beam scanning system. Intel unveiled a multiprocess node chiplet architecture, the second-gen Intel AI-enhanced software-defined vehicle system on chip. The company also announced collaborations with ModelBest and Black Sesame, aimed at AI-powered cockpits, integrated advanced driver assistance systems, and energy-efficient vehicle compute platforms. Omnivision announced an image sensor for in-cabin automotive driver monitoring systems. Valens Semiconductor and Eswin Computing partnered to bring a suite of MIPI A5 solutions to the Chinese market. Global automotive NAD module and chipset shipments rose 14% year-over-year, driven by embedded connectivity per counterpoint. The analyst firm also provided insights into the cellular vehicle-to-everything technology. In battery technology, Stellantis and Factorial Energy successfully validated Factorial's auto-sized solid-state battery cells, which charge in just 18 minutes. China's CATL will mass-produce its Naxtra sodium-ion battery packs by the end of this year to enable EVs to travel up to 310 miles on a 5-minute charge, beating BYD's 5-minute charge on distance per CNBC. And Psionic Energy was awarded a $200,000 Superboost grant from the National Science Foundation's Energy Storage Engine in upstate New York to develop and sell its 100% silicon lithium-ion battery platform. Now let's turn to research. Sandia National Lab-led researchers designed an ultra-low-power, long-duration toxin sensor fabricated by TSMC that detects sarin and other chemical warfare agents or gaseous industrial toxins. University of Tokyo researchers demonstrated a significant performance increase in cooling technology for high-power electronic devices. Two Win and partners produced new efficient thermoelectric materials that could offer greater stability and lower costs. Researchers from Hirosaki University, University Cote d'Azur, and University of Bristol developed a safer alternative to PFAS by mimicking the spatial bulkiness of fluorine using only non-toxic carbon and hydrogen. Princeton University engineers invented a metamaterial called a metabot. The Korea Institute of Technology and Korea University researchers developed a biofriendly ultrasonic receiver that maintains its performance even when bent. And Georgia Tech and partners developed a wearable device that offers insight into skin health by monitoring the flux of vapors that travel through the skin. And that's this week in chips. For this and other news, check out our Week in Review column at semiengineering.com. Until next time, keep your layers aligned, your noise is low, and your focus on the future. I'm Gregory Haley. See you on the next spin.